this uh, table looks delicious. Talk to us a little bit about, we know you're here in town on a book tour. You've written a book. Tell us a little bit about it. I think we can see it right here, too. And yep. it is called Hungry Girls Supermarket, Supermarket Survival. It's actually my sixth book. My first five were cookbooks, right. but this book is more of a supermarket survival guide. Okay. Helping you survive the aisles, aisle by aisle, HG style. It's hard to shop. It is. Sometimes. You know, we're faced with so many choices and right. so many labels and things just hitting us in the face, and we don't know what to do, right? And this book really breaks it down. So talk to us. We've got some examples here. You were telling me earlier, this is so that we can shop for maybe bigger portions. Yeah, so I mean, every, we're full. always told, you know, to eat portion controlled foods, but you know, we're all hungry and we want to bulk up our portion sizes without mm -hmm. adding fat and calories. So I have some of my favorite supersizers here. Okay. Now pasta is something I like typically avoid because starches are high in calories right. and the serving sizes are a little small, but I like to bulk up my pasta with produce. How do we do that? So, this is whole wheat spaghetti. This is one serving of that. And to bulk that up, I add a nice, healthy portion of, guess what? Spaghetti squash. Now, most <gasps> people don't realize that. It has about 30 calories a cup, and it tastes a lot like spaghetti. So I either eat it alone, or I mix it in with the spaghetti with marinara sauce, and oh, it's great. It looks delicious. Same deal here with the fettuccine. That's spinach fettuccine. But to bulk that up, I use ribbons of zucchini. And so you just cook that in the microwave or cook it with the fettuccine, and it's amazing. Easy. Again, you can add so much flavor, and vegetables are good for you. Right. And then you bulk up your portion size for not a lot of calories. Okay, so I have to tell you, I, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I pretty much live on the lean cuisines. Okay, so don't I'd be like ashamed of that. It's good. I mean, I love them too, but to me, again, the portion sizes, are they big enough? Right mm, now, they're tiny. Not really. <laughs> so in order to bulk those up, these frozen veggies are, are just amazing. It's a great mm. variety. Sometimes I add a whole bag of frozen veggies. The reason is, these meals come with a lot of sauce. Yes. And so there's plenty of sauce to go around. And you add, you know, even if you added the whole bag, it's usually around 100 or a little over 100 calories, which is totally worth it to get the huge portions. You know, something, Lisa, I like about your website a lot is that you have tons of uh, recipes on there, and it shows how many calories and how many fat grams are in everything. Is yep. That, is that something it's, we're going to find in the book, too? The book has a lot of that information because knowledge is power, and that information's right there, even at the market, on the shelves. You have to just flip those packages around and pay attention. So talk to us a little bit about what else we're seeing here. Cereal, same mm -hmm. kind of deal. Cereal, to me, you know, the serving sizes are usually about a cup, but I like to bulk them up with puffed cereals because this oh. stuff has only about 60 or 70 calories a cup. So if you add a cup of your other, you know, the flakes or whatever else you like with a cup of the puffed stuff, mm -hmm. it doesn't add a lot of calories and you get more food. There's a theme here. <laughs> more food. <laughs> it's not about overdoing it, but it's about having nice, you know, healthy portions that satisfy. So you don't get hungry again in, in a few hours, I exactly. think is the main idea. Mm -hmm. All right. What else do we have here? All right. Same deal with potatoes. I love mashed potatoes, but... The serving size for regular mashed potatoes, if you just use the potato, pretty small, uh -huh. and I love to bulk it up with cauliflower. Oh, that's a good idea. You just idea. steam that cauliflower, you mash it up, and you can get a huge amount. And when you mix it in with like the light butter and the salt and the pepper, it tastes a lot like mashed potatoes. Cauliflower is good for you. It is good, for <laughs> sure. All right, what about the pumpkin? All right, the pumpkin, these are just some common ingredients with uncommon uses. Mm -hmm. Pumpkin, a lot of people think of as just a holiday item. You can actually bake with it. Listen to this, two ingredients only, one box of cake mix, one can of pumpkin, you mix that up. It looks really thick and you're going to be thinking you want to add eggs or oil, but don't do it. Just bake that up and it's phenomenal. Sounds delicious. Lisa, talk to us a little bit about briefly about uh, the show that we can see on the Food Network. Shows on Food Network, mm -hmm. Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's so much fun. There's cooking. I go to restaurants. I shop at the supermarket. I love it. It's, it's a lot of information in a half hour. Very good. Well, we hope people check it out definitely. Also, we hope they check out the book. You are in town on your book tour. I am. I I'm got, signing tonight. It is very exciting. Very exciting to be in Austin. information about that. We're going to put it on the screen right now. Hungry Girl by Lisa. is. Uh, you can. It's a meet and greet really what, what they're greet. doing tonight at HEB. Six o'clock. Prizes, free State. snacks, you name it. Excellent. I can't wait to see everyone there. <laughs> it's at uh, 5800 West Slaughter Lane. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Thank we you really for appreciate having it. Me. People can find a lot more information too on your blog online. Yep, on the website, hungry-girl.com. Right. Thank you so much.